This program is brought to you by Cable Franchise Vs and generous donations from viewers like you. Seeing the presence of quorum, I would like to call to order the special meeting of the Region Amherst Hillam Regional School Committee um, on Thursday, January 21st, uh, 2021. Um, when I call your name, would you please indicate your presence? Um, Mr. Demling. Demling present. Um, Mr. Harrington. Carrington present. Miss Spitzer. Spitzer present. Miss Lord. Lord present. Um, Miss McDonald. McDonald present. Miss Seeger. Seeger present. Mr. Sullivan. Sullivan present. And I think that's everybody. Um, and Stancer present. Um, Ms. McDonald, are you, do you want me to turn the meeting over to Ms. Cunningham or to Dr. Morris, or are you ready to take over? Um, I think at this point we will um, turn it over to um, our, um, to Ms. Cunningham, I'm assuming she's here. <laughs> like, um, she is here. This meeting, yeah. that was great. Tiffany, did you have your hand up? I'm sorry, but I, Ms. Cunningham could call on you. I just want, I want to make sure Ms. Cunningham was able to see that. Thank you. Hi, uh, Ms. Thibodeau, is there something you'd like to state? Yeah, you might already be ready to talk about it, but I know there was the clarification about the agenda and I wasn't sure if that was part of the school committee's road for role. Um, yes, sorry. <laughs> no yeah. problem. Um, sorry, thank you for reminding us. Um, yes, there is um, a site, uh, the published agenda um, if the rest of the regional school committee is okay with this change, um, we'd like to change it so that instead of having, um, that we would like to have the bulk of the meeting for the discussion as opposed to the welcome and conversation. Are folks um, amenable to that? I'm seeing some tiny nodding heads. Okay, so we will make that change. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you all for that. So welcome everyone to the third meeting of the school committee and the APEA executive board. Many have expressed their appreciation for the steps that we have taken so far and for the continued commitment to be transparent and collaborative. So once again, before we start, there are norms that we have all abided by in the past two meetings and I'm just going to state them again for this meeting. First norm is that we will assume positive intentions. One person will speak at a time. We will focus on solutions. We will listen in order to understand. And finally, we will accept and expect non-closure. So once again, staying on this call shows that you are willing to abide by those norms. Okay, I see everyone has stayed. So with that being said, um, the district and the APEA has had two discussions so far about the directives that were issued by the school committee to the superintendent. And we have uh, potential dates next week where we will continue to collaborate. And the reason I state that is because the prompt that we ended with last week talked about the things, or let me read it directly. It says, knowing that there are educators, families, and various members of the community who are interested in a safe return of staff and students to the APEA, what protections are you asking the district to ensure is in place? And to the school committee, what protections can you currently ensure will be in place? So me stating that the district and the APEA have already started communication is just so that the community understands the transparency that we have started the communication and that here, we're going to talk about the protections that both of you would like to see in place on behalf of our staff and our students. So with that being said, I know that we had ended very quickly once that question was posed. And so I'm gonna ask Ms. 
McDonald if she can repeat what she had said, um, if she can remember, um, <laughs> if she can repeat at least the premise of what the protections are that the school committee is ready to provide. And I'll ask for the APEA to let me know who will be able to respond as um, Ms. McGee is not here today. Um, thanks for the refresher. Um, I, I, I believe that what we, what um, I had started with was um, in terms of pr protections um, that we as a school committee are committed to all of the protections that we um, uh, outlined and have settled and agreed to in, in our current memorandum of understanding. Um, our, our two groups um, or our representatives, our bargaining representatives worked really hard um, over the summer to come to those agreements and we stand by those um, and fully expect that the district will continue to, um, to uphold those, um, those protections that we've, um, we've described. Thank you. And I'd like someone on behalf of the APEA exec board. Okay, Ms. Thibodeau. Sure, thank you. Um, and we were also reassured um, as the APA executive board when Ms. McDonald shared last week that um, the safety protocols currently um, stated in our memorandum agreement would continue to be followed even um, with this possible um, proposal of voluntary um, um, return to in person. And so, and those are the protections that we are um, looking to or feeling our members are saying that they would like to have in place in order to feel like they can have a safe return. Um, along with that, um, we, we see the side letters as a way of be, having them documented in, in writing to support our members in being protected. Um, in addition, we also know that the uh, staff members that previously the um, Federal um, Family uh, Coronavirus Act, the FFCRA um, was extended to March 31st, um, but I'm not sure whether that falls in line with our district um, of, I know you have to opt into it. So um, any details that you can give us about our district uh, committing to offering that to staff members who may be returning to in-person. Um, and then one other, question we had was relating to the pool testing and knowing that I think there are like over 300 schools who are hoping to be a part of this program and, and wondering where uh, Amherst stands in terms of whether we had any notification about acceptance or when we should expect to know that. And I think I, I believe that I've sort of highlighted the, the main things that were coming from our members and from our board. With that being said, I would like to still open the floor to any board member from the APEA who would like to comment. Ms. Uh, Jagadish? You are muted. Please unmute. Unbelievable. <laughs> so backing up just a little bit um, in terms of communication, We'd like to have a shared understanding of how communication will happen between school committee and APA and what and how things will be communicated to families in the community. So there's already been um, when our staff members heard about the school committee's directive to Dr. Morris, um, there was a lot of misunderstandings and there continue to be misunderstandings about when and how so really having a plan of how school committee, APA, and the district is gonna communicate would really be helpful in moving this process forward. And in that collaborative spirit, we'd really like to issue joint statements with the school committee and the district, but understand that that's not always possible. And if that's not possible to extend the courtesy of sharing with each other before at the same time that we share things with the press. Um, and then another really important question we had was, has school committee authorized Dr. Morris to negotiate directly with APEA? So there was a directive that was given to Dr. Morris 
that he should collaborate with us, but it would be helpful to have that clarified whether that is indeed the school committee authorizing Dr. Morris to negotiate with APA. Um, the executive board, as um, Ms. Cunningham stated, has already had some positive con conversations with the district about how to move forward and we're feeling really good about that. Um, we would really need to know the parameters of that collaboration. And if Dr. Morris can make decisions with us and can move forward without further authorization from the school committee, that would really enable things to move more smoothly and expedite the process. So we would need to know if Dr. Morris is authorized to negotiate in order to be able to collaborate with the superintendent, as was the school committee's charge in their directive. Thank you. Ms. Rhodes. Thank you. Um, I just want to add a, a little bit to what Mangavan has um, just shared. And I think that, first of all, um, we received the Nexus reports this week. So thank you. We really appreciate um, having those reports. And um, some of our APA members are looking over those now. Um, and I think that, um, you know, continuing to share any of that information as soon as we have it is really important. I know there's ongoing work being done all the time and any reports that we get are updated reports. It would be really um, beneficial for us to have those as soon as possible um, if we can get into the habit of that. Um, in addition, I think that it would be um, really important for our members to understand what um, is and isn't in place right now as far as safety parameters go. So if things are ongoing or work is being done, being really having a really clear system set up so that our members know what rooms are open, what rooms are not open, um, so they know what the contact tracing protocol is, if those have changed or any other safety protocols have changed. I know that there's a lot of work being done on these things behind the scenes, um, but just a way for that to be really clearly communicated with all staff through all buildings. So everyone's hearing the same messages, um, I think is really important to our members. Um, and finally, we'd love to know what the family responsibilities are going to be under this new program. And maybe that's something we're gonna work on developing together. Um, but I think it's important for our members to know what's expected of families who are sending their students in, um, in this first wave of, of um, having students in person over the next month or so. So those are things that I would add that we're looking for. Is there anyone else from the APEA Executive Board? Okay, seeing as no one has raised their hand, I will turn back to the school committee. There were questions. I don't know, Allison, if you had an opportunity to write down some of the things that were stated, but I can just repeat them one by one so that you or Dr. Morris may have an opportunity or any school. Ms. Uh, hold on one second, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ms. McDonald, let me pause just to go back to the APEA for a moment. Okay, Ms. Todd. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, so there has been some discussion too on um, clarification on what's being communicated to the um, to the community and to families. And um, we, we want to have a, a shared understanding of what it's like when we discuss the metrics, what are like, what are we actually discussing? Cause metrics are so much broader than just like case numbers. And um, it's important that, you know, the community is aware of that and that our, you know, staff members are aware of that and things like that. So. Thank you. Ms. Jagadish. Did you just want me to know that Ms. Todd's hands were up? Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> okay. So Ms. McDonald, going back to you. 
I, 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 I probably will need your help because I was switching devices and so um, my note taking is not not quite um, up to par. But I do I did um, hear the the first question was about um, or at least the first question that I noted about what and how will communication happen between the APA, the school committee, and the district. Um, and I, I frankly would love to hear ideas um, from this assembled group to hear sort of what folk, what you all are thinking would be helpful. I, I personally find these meetings to be helpful. I don't know if we need to do them on a weekly basis throughout the year, um, maybe sort of at certain points in time, but I do find these con open conversations and sharing of ideas and concerns to be really helpful. Um, so this could be one one way for communication to go. I also um, personally have found um, our email. So you're you have an email distribution group, um, and and I've I've found um, that the that the our responsiveness and sort of openness within that email has been with has been helpful and supportive in in moving this conversation forward. So those are just my two ideas, but I think that's something that this group. Um, actually is probably ideally suited to sort of sharing ideas and, and sort of coming up with an, an action plan there. And I don't mm -hmm. remember what the other questions were. <laughs> I'm not going to say that I have 100% of what was said, but I will try my best. Uh, the FFCRA was extended until March 31st, and there was a question as to whether the district will be willing to extend it to the staff. Um, I, I think that and a couple of the other questions are probably um, questions that um, that are best dealt with in within the the confines of the the collaboration with the district. Um, and that gets to one of the other questions that I did write down, which was because I don't I, I, just to say not, I'm not trying to defer or deflect. I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, so I would have to ask that question myself of um, Ms. Cunningham and Dr. Morris, and maybe they can speak to that. But my thought is um, in terms of authorizing the district to negotiate um, and uh, you know, helping, you, you mentioned that that would help move things along more quickly. Um, that's something that the regional school committee would, would need to sort of discuss um, separately, um, probably in, in executive session, I'm sort of looking at my expert on this um, that uh, in, to make that decision and then officially officially appoint and agree to authorizing the district to do so on our behalf. So we, we um, would need an extra meeting to do that. And I think several of these items would fall under um, under that conversation sort of once, you know, assuming we do empower them to represent uh, and, and negotiate on our behalf. Um, I, I feel like a bunch of those would probably fall under that. I don't, I don't know, Dr. Morris or Ms. Cunningham, if you have other thoughts on that. Since I'm me um, doing the facilitating, I am going to take off the hat of HR director slash assistant superintendent and just focus on the hat of being the facilitator. So I will leave it to Dr. Mor Morris if he'd like to answer that. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously I can't speak for the committee. Um, but I think in terms of FFCRA, I'd be curious what clauses of FFCRA uh, relate to this um, voluntary approach. Um, and I don't expect you all to have that mapped out. Maybe you do, but I don't expect you to have it on the spot. Um, FFCRA, is, FFCRA was a wide sweeping piece of legislation. So um, I guess I'd be curious about what aspects of that, uh, what provisions of that relate to voluntary return to work that you're looking to be expend, um, asking for it to be extended. So um, that's it's not it, it's it's not about school committee and, and me and who has the authority. I think it's just as we get down to it, there's plenty of parts of FFCRA that actually, um, in my opinion, aren't related to a voluntary return to work, and um, and some perhaps are. And so I think digging in on what aspects of it that the APA is looking for uh, to be extended and how it relates to the current um, school committee vote. Uh, I guess that that would be the kind of data you know I would need to then engage in the conversation um, further. Sorry, long-winded. I could have said that quicker. My bad. Ms. McDonald, there was also a question about pool testing. 
I don't know if you or Dr. Morris have an answer to that. I can definitely speak to that one. Um, so we were one of the districts that did apply, um, as, as I think has been shared before. We have our buy next system up and running. Uh, we applied for a pool testing. I think the thing to note is uh, all of those, um, same with Binex, they're site specific. So I think if we do move forward, it's not like we get in and all the sites are then good. Uh, if we do expand to multiple sites, we need uh, different people to go undergo training and to get licensed to be able to administer those tests. Um, so there is a, a bit of a time lag. So right now we're, we for Binex, for instance, we are cleared for student, you know, a nurse at the high school. Um, the high school is a site that has been approved for Binex testing, and it's the same kind of process for pool testing. So I think uh, as we develop our system and our approach, given the kind of the vote and this collaboration, there, there's going to be some further applications to the state uh, for the not just the test, but actually to be licensed to offer those. Um, is my understanding from our nurse leader is that they are site specific and um, you can only apply for schools um, that are open. Um, you can't apply for schools that are closed. So it, it would involve some reapplications as we go down. Uh, but, you know, the district, you know, did put in its application, which gets it in the queue, which makes I, my understanding is makes further applications a little bit easier. Because sort of once you're in expanding it is a little easier than being out of it, not hitting a deadline and then asking to get back in. Um, but that application did go in uh, before the deadline. If you look at like, I saw a couple articles that listed all the districts that opted to uh, opted to apply. We're in that. We haven't received any confirmation or any more information. I think there's a conference call tomorrow, but I don't think it'll be. It's a general one. It's not like a specific one for our district. So, as we get more information, we're happy to share it. Um, but I did want to just mention that it is uh, our understanding at the current time, and Binex certainly is like that. You you get an official certificate. Uh, from the Department of Health of the state that lists it as a, a site where those the, those kind of um, testing, to those tests can happen. But uh, applications in and we'll see what happens. Thank you. Ms. McDonnell, it seems like the rest of the questions or thoughts that I have listed basically falls under communication, basically clarifying what's being um, communicated family responsibilities, uh, having joint statements if possible, if not preview, having a preview of what's going to be communicated and what is in place as far as safety parameters and how they will be clearly communicated with staff. Also the Nexus and other updated reports that's also under communication may want the updated reports. Do you have anything to state or share with that, Ms. McDonald? Um, yeah, on the on the um, the question about joint statements or sharing um, sharing comments um, or statements um, communication that might be going public beforehand, um, I'm I'm definitely open to that, and I do think that there's a there's a a, um, a valuable role that our two organizations um, issuing joint statements can really have. Um, uh, for the community and for for our our schools and families um, to show that we are coming together on um, and sharing these statements. So um, there, you know, as 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 any two groups, we will probably disagree on some things, and so we can't sort of say that we'll always have joint statements together. But I think um, I can definitely commit to sharing um, any letters, any public statements or public letters that we might be issuing. Um, prior to making them public, just as 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 you did over the weekend, frankly, with sharing the um, the statement, I think it was over the last weekend, it, it all blurs together. <laughs> um, but recently, when you shared um, your statement um, to the press with um, with us on the same day, so um, you know, at a minimum, we can definitely commit to that. And I my hope would be that we could come up with a joint statement, particularly around the collaboration that is starting um, for this voluntary return. I think that would be a really helpful one for us to sort of aim for. And the other ones I think um, have more to do with the implementation of that family, of the of the in-person voluntary return. Um, and I, I know that we, we commit to open communication, but I think some of those have more to do with the actual implementation of what the plan is. So I don't know. Um, if I'm in a position to be able to answer those right now. Thank you. 
So now the floor is open to anyone who'd like to add something up on, on either side, whether it's the APEA executive board or the school committee, who would like to add to the prompt or just state something that they wanted to share. This is before I move to the next prompt. I think Mr. Sullivan has his hand up. <laughs> Mr. Sullivan, go ahead. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of super confused by the mention of negotiating with the superintendent. I don't understand where that's coming from and it's it sounds to me almost like it's circ circumventing the school committee. Are, are you talk are they talking about the actual MOA, or are they talking about separate things? And the other, like the safety protocols, uh, from my understanding, this, the district was ready to roll with phase one and phase two by September 29th. And if anything, by now that we're into January, there'd even be better protocols in place. So I'm not quite sure what that was about either. So if I'm hearing you correctly, okay, Ms. McDonald, go ahead. Sorry, I, um, my understanding, and maybe I misunderstood, was that when we were talking about sort of authorizing the superintendent and the district to to sort of work um, uh, on our behalf, it was not related to the MOA, but to the side letters for the voluntary return. So is that, did I misunderstand? No, that's correct. Okay. So does that answer your question, Mr. Sullivan? Okay. Thank you, Ms. McDonald. And with her answering, I don't have to. <laughs> All right, so the question that I have or the prompt, I want both sides to just let teachers know, those who would like to voluntarily return, what, what do you want them to know from each of, each of you? So from the APEA, what do you want teachers who are going to volunteer to know that you are doing on their behalf? And then from the school committee, what would you like teachers to know? or anyone who's volunteering to return to know what you are going to do on their behalf. We have teachers who are coming back. <laughs> um, Ms. Jagadish. So I think if I'm under, I mean, this might not exactly be an answer to your prompt, but I think what teachers really need to know and what teachers, I think, need the community to know is, um, so especially for primary school teachers, we take, parents are sending their children to us and expecting us to keep their children safe. And that's something that is true, you know, outside of the pandemic that we're in right now. So primary school teachers make sure that when we're on the playground, the games that are being played, the interactions that are happening between students, we take that responsibility very seriously of keeping children safe. And parents trust us with that safety. So teachers really need to know and feel that they can do that. And a lot is involved in being able to do that. So um, Mr. Sullivan asked that question about the safety protocols being in place. That, so from our point of view, and we've been working with the district on this and JLMSC is working on this, there are still a lot of safety protocols that are not sufficiently in place for many teachers to feel that they can take on this charge of keeping the children safe. So it isn't just about the level of risk that, that an individual teacher may be able to accept in, in order to be able to come in person under the, you know, with the case numbers that the way that they are, but it's also teachers being able to feel like they can keep the children safe. Thank you. Ms. Rhodes? Um, I just want to take on a slightly different angle than Mangala's. I really appreciate um, your response, Mangala. Um, but I want to 
speak to how, especially the APA exec board, um, can support teachers who are thinking about going in voluntarily to the school. Um, and I think that um, we are here to do what is asked of us by our members. So our, our members um, tell us what they would like, and that's what we work towards. So we're here to support teachers who are feeling comfortable going in voluntarily and helping them ensure that they have um, everything they need to feel safe and supported while being in person. We're here to support our teachers who need to stay remote and we're here to provide everything they need and are asking us to do to help them feel safe and supported while working remotely, whether that's job security or whether that is um, the impact of making that really hard decision to stay remote when there's a choice to go in voluntarily and what that does um, emotionally for teachers who are making that choice. Um, so really that is our role as the is the exec board to get all the information we can from our members and then work with the district to um, help our teachers um, teach the best they can by providing them with those safeties and securities. Thank you. Mr. Demling? Yeah, I'd say so two things from the prompt of what, what, what I want teachers who are considering volunteering to know. One is that, um, uh, and the school committee uh, discussed this a lot when we made the motion, um, that uh, there's total respect for teacher autonomy when it comes to um, the, 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 it, that it, that this, is a, this is a choice, it's an opportunity with, and, and that we should not be pressuring, um, you know, the, there should be no school committee member or a district member or public or teacher, anybody who is pressuring one way or the other. And, and that, um, you know, uh, at least, you know, we're, we're committed as public figures to, um, to modeling that, um, you know, as yes, it's obviously true that the school committee has been asking to change the MOA for a while, but the, the legal reality is that we have an MOA in place and that has metrics and it does not require staff to be back right now. And so that's a complete, uh, legal right that um, uh, I completely respect and that this whole committee completely honors and respects and that this when we say volunteer we mean you know voluntary you know and um, I think that's a big um, that that's a really important point that I don't think we can make enough uh, because I've, I've lived in communities where it's gotten pretty nasty between um, you know, unions and management before, and uh, it doesn't have a, a, a great lasting effect um, on the community. So I, th I think that's that's important. Um, the other thing is, you know, I heard um, someone mentioned before uh, about the safety protocols and wanted to make, you know, what, what are, what, A, what are they? And then B, are they sufficiently in place? I think a commitment, certainly I have on school committee is that if we've committed to safety protocols that are there in the MOA that are not changed, um, if they're not sufficiently in place, you know, the school committee wants to know about it. <laughs> you know, it's like we we expect the um, uh, the superintendent and the district to be implementing what we've agreed to. And so, if if uh, as and and you know, the school committee obviously isn't on the ground, right? We're not in the buildings um, to be able to say exactly how these things are 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 or not being met. And so. Uh, you know, part of that, the JLMC is part is part of that. But I think also, you know, part of that, maybe op more open communication is is letting the school committee know, hey, you know, if if you're particularly concerned about some aspect that we've already agreed to, right, that we are obligated to implement, and that's not being met, then we want to know about that so that we can bring it up to the superintendent um, and and he can get on it. Um, so I think I think that's it's it's, I think it's really about assuring um, staff that we're we're committed to what we've already committed to, right? Which is the MOA that does not require you to go in right now, um, and uh, and it includes um, a number of uh, safety protocols and um, and whatnot that um, that we expect to be fully and completely implemented. Thank you. The floor remains open for anyone who would like to speak. Ms. McDonald? Yeah, I think I'd like to um, sort of restate what I'm hearing several folks say is, is this sense of um, 
you you asked the question about teachers who are volunteering, and I and I think in terms, I think it's also who are not um, volunteering and as you know are choosing as as Ms. Rhodes said, making the really hard decision, um, in some cases emotional decision to to remain remote and to know that whatever the decision is of any individual teacher or um, educator, that that we support that. Um, and th and that that was the point of asking for a voluntary return was that it's really it's it, it really should be voluntary um, instructional situation because <laughs> you know we're we're opening up another opportunity but the, the choice is in front of the individual to make to choose either remote or in person um, and I think. Um, so I just really want that was came up in our committee conversations that um, I absolutely um, uh, believe that myself and um, know that the others, my colleagues do too, that we respect all decisions um, and um, and that for those who do opt to be in the building um, with students that a we want to make sure that the protections that we've um, documented and and settled in our in our MOA are being implemented and are working um, and you know to help everybody um, feel safe um, and if they're not then use um, our avenues of communication whether it's the JLMSC or other avenues to to reflect that so that it's the communication is is continuing um, and if something isn't happening uh, you know sort of like the norms that we have here don't you know, assume best intent, um, because we've never been in a pandemic before. Um, and so I think, you know, it's, it's, there's a little bit of um, ingenuity and innovation that will need to happen even once, um, even once we're there and sort of keeping that this communication going, I think is super helpful. Thank you. This question is going to be posed to only the APEA exec board. And I know it may be tough to respond to, but the question is, why go the route of side letters instead of reopening the MOA? Like what, why would we do side letters instead of reopening MOAs? Ms. Rhodes? Sure. Um, so, you know, we've had this conversation a lot with our membership. Um, when we are um, surveying or speaking to our membership, we have, like we said, we've yet to get a mandate to reopen the MOA. Um, when we dig deeper into the feelings around what people are willing or thinking about is important, to have changed, we do get a lot more consensus. So that's where our side letters of intensive needs in preschool came from, because the consensus was there that, that these students um, need in-person learning now, and how can we get that for them now? When our membership, and our membership we, we've shared is split on this. There's, there's a lot of feelings about this. Um, most of the talk of reopening the MOA comes back to the metrics conversation. Um, and, and I think that that's what we've been hearing and we might not be hearing fully. So we are really open to the school committee telling us that there are other areas of the MOA that they're looking to be talking about and renegotiating. Um, but what we've been hearing is it's really around that number, around that metric. And at this time, our membership has not told us that that's something they're, that we're willing to reopen the MOA around. Um, we continue to want to move forward, and I think the membership is in agreement on that. Um, the areas that we want to move forward is really addressing the needs of our students who are not accessing um, remote learning in a way that is working for them or their families, and that's really what we're hearing from our members. And that isn't something that was written into the MOA because we weren't really anticipating that as we were writing the MOA. So the areas where we're looking to move forward and change 
um, and really help our students and their families are things that are outside of the MOA. And we're continuing when we ask our membership around renegotiating the MOA to hear that they're not ready to do that. Thank you, Ms. Rose, for responding to that. I know that was a very difficult question. I know that your response will help many in the community to understand the, di the difference between the MOA and the side letter. So thank you again for responding. Now, I know in conversation yesterday, there were some things that um, was brought up to say that there was some miscommunication and that there were some who thought that the superintendent was directed to start and uh, possibly open schools beginning February 1st. I know the APEA wanted an opportunity to say something regarding that and possibly Dr. Morris, if I'm correct. So we will give, the, turn the floor over to anyone who is willing to respond and raise their hand. Okay, I, I think I can try. And uh, Tiffany, anyone who, who, cause we talked about this yesterday, uh, uh, if I'm getting something wrong, just let me know. Um, but I think what I heard yesterday was that there were a lot of rumors out there. For some reason, February 8th was a date that um, people believed um, that this option, you know, the voluntary program would start. Um, I wanna be really clear that I've never said that date. My administrative team have never said that date. It came as a huge surprise to me. Uh, I think the school committee, um, I'm pretty confident intentionally left that as the month of February, because they understood that there was gonna be a, a tremendous amount of logistics um, that would in, that would in t be entailed in a voluntary program, program or t voluntary in-person program, both in terms of staff who want to return, but also students, right? So there's a, there's a lot of people we have to get lots of opinions about and then match our capacity um, to have seats with people who want them uh, in the school. So um, there's not been a date established. And I think one of the other parts of that vote was that uh, a directive to collaborate with APA. And as, as was mentioned earlier, we've had two meetings and I think we're making substantial progress. Appreciate the collaboration with the executive board. Um, but just to be really clear, February 8th is not a date that um, I uttered until tonight because I heard it yesterday. Um, and I think when we are able to establish uh, specific dates, we'll certainly communicate them out. You know, I think there was conversation before about joint statement. I think that's a, a really good one to have that if we can kind of understand best how to survey family, survey staff, survey families, and do the matching um, so that, I, you know, if you hear a date before you hear it from me or from us, please know that it's not a real date. Uh, and then when we have that date established, we'll be communicating that out all together uh, and not piecemeal. So I think, you know, I appreciate that sometimes rumors get to me, sometimes they don't. This one had not. So I appreciate uh, it being shared with me and just the opportunity to clarify that for anyone who's watching. And if I, if, I, if I missed a detail, you know, anyone please jump in. And for the exec board, is there anything else that you wanted clarified on this call? Ms. Dancer? Um, so we've had this, this is the third meeting with Scroop together Am I hearing that other meetings are going on to talk about the side letters? Um, somebody said something about progress being made with the superintendent. So I'm just a little vague on details. You know, we're not talking about any details in this. Like, you know, what are the specific things that maybe aren't being met safety wise? I mean, you can't fix them if you don't know what they are. So what what's happening besides just these meetings, if anything? Dr. Morris? Yeah, so a lot of those go through, as per the MOA, go to the JLMC. Um, so um, as I think has been talked about before, there's a JLMC that is um, a small group meeting um, and because some issues come up that are confidential. Uh, and then there's a larger group meeting. And like last week, I understand from Mr. Harrington that there, a couple of protocol issues came up that um, will be talked about um, in their next meeting. So that'd be the the, the place, I think, uh, in terms of meetings that uh, Ms. Cunningham, Ms. Ortiz, and myself have had with the executive board, 
uh, a lot of them are, and this is pretty typical, are just routine meetings that we try to have because issues accumulate, you know, um, and they're not necessarily just issues about an MOA or issues about COVID related challenges, just, you know, that we're trying to reestablish strong communication. Now, truth be told, we're in a context where a lot of the issues do relate to those, but um, typical, you know, and Ms. Cunningham leads, you know, routinely over the years that I've worked with her joint labor management meetings. Um, so, you know, at no point was we were talking about the MOA or anything that would be school committee specific information, but it is an opportunity to share uh, and work on any protocols that come up or any feedback. But JLMC is the primary um, venue for discussions about protocols in the way that was described before. Um, does that help, Ms. Stancer? Um Sure. It it does on the, I'm sorry, Ms. Cunningham, should I wait? No, 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 I said go ahead, Ms. Dancer. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sure, I, I understand about the JLSMC, but how how is the actual, how are things actually going to move forward? You know, I, I don't, I, that's what I'm wondering about. Sure, you know, let me see if- gonna talk. How, how are things going to start to happen are they going to be in these meetings? Are they going to be in other meetings? Because I feel like we're spending a lot of time talking about important things, but we're not talking about happening. <laughs> Dr. Morris? Oh, uh, I saw actually oh, uh, Ms. Ms. Ragadee. Um, Ragadee, yeah. Yeah, her hand was up before mine, so. Go ahead. Well, I'm probably going to say the same thing that you were going to say. <laughs> so when I mean, school committee is going to meet to um, to talk about whether they can authorize Dr. Morris to negotiate directly with APA. So that would be a first step. Um, Dr. Morris and the executive board have already spoken about what first steps would be in order to move forward with a voluntary program. So a first step would be surveying staff, and we were going to work together to do a survey for staff to see what kind of numbers we have um, to work with in terms of building a bond, building a program and what students we would be able to offer something to. And then we would need to reach out to families and work on how we could match up the staff who we have with the students, with the students who we could offer in-person learning to. So those are the first two steps that we would be taking together. And through that process, if we get authorization from school committee, we would be able to write side letters to kind of put all of this in writing of, of what would be expected of staff members who were, um, who were able to assume the risk of in-person um, instruction. And maybe Dr. Morris can go from there. I guess that's as far as we've gotten in terms of thinking how this would move forward. Okay, thank you. Dr. Morris, I'm going to have Mr. Demling go before you. So go ahead, Mr. Demling. Yeah, I mean, I just want to say briefly, um, I mean, going back to the language of the motion, um, you know, the school committee directs the superintendent to develop and implement a plan and then describes what the plan is and then to work closely in collaboration with APA leadership. Um, so this is, this is a, so we mentioned this at the committee meeting as well. This is a huge ask of the superintendent, right? We didn't, this wasn't the school committee saying, here's how it's going to go, and then just, you know, fill in the details. It's it's not just impl implementing the plan, it's developing um, the, the plan as well. And so Dr. Morris has a tremendous amount of work to do um, to to lead this effort. Um, and so, um, you know, if like in terms of like negotiation, negotiating, um, you know, I'm not, I, I can't say um, like how that affects contracts and whatnot, but um, I would, my expectation would be that working closely in collaboration with APEA means don't waste any time now. And I'm, I'm, I imagine Dr. Morris feels the same way, but um, you know, you have a lot to do. And the example that um, was brought up, just brought up about the surveys, that's that's a perfect example. There's there's a detail, one of many details, right? That's gonna have to get um, settled. Um, and so, uh, you know, that, that at least in my sense of the motion, it's, you know, sort of has given the, uh, superintendent sort of broad direction to go forth and implement and and uh, and don't waste time <laughs> in, in developing the plan. Um, I don't know if you received it in the same sense, Dr. Morris. Yeah, Just to uh, I agree. Contact, we have six minutes and we 
we have many people who may want to respond. Go ahead, Dr. Morris. Yeah, and we do need actually Amherst Media is letting me know they do need a, a minute or two gap between this meeting and then the, the joint meeting that happened that follows it. So um, I can try to get that one set up, um, but it, it, I think we probably ending it at the latest 630, if not a, a minute or two earlier, would help Amherst Media. Um, I, I have nothing more to add on this part other than I agree with what Ms. Jag said. That's exactly what I would have said. She was she was right at the beginning of her statement. Um, uh, Ms. Jagadish, excuse me. And then I agree with what Mr. Deming said as well. Um, that I think if we're gonna if we're gonna do this, we have to do it. You know, um, relatively um, aggressively in terms of a timeline. I don't mean aggressively in terms of the approach um, in terms of safety, but aggressively in terms of a timeline to meet the school committee expectations and i'll be giving an update at the school committee meeting in a couple minutes during superintendent update about um i'll be basically restating probably less well uh what miss jagadish shared here uh just about our meeting and and the collaboration and some of the next steps we're taking we're planning on taking thank you Ms. rhodes um i just want to ask a clarifying point mr demling around what you just said um so i think that you know we have the same um, expectation as you know moving quickly and and really trying to get into this work with Eugenia it's a lot of work ahead and in talking to Dr. Morris about the collaborative process we know it's going to take a lot of time and effort to do that and we want to do this um, for our members who are looking to go back voluntarily I think the piece that we were trying to state with the negotiations and the side letters is that we also want to ensure just as we did with the preschool and the intensive needs that it's written in a side letter what you're stating you're willing to do, which is um, keep the protections of the MOA while we're implementing that. And I think that's all we're looking for, um, just to clarify on that point. Thank you. And just through this meeting, many of these intentions have been stated to the com community. And so, you know, putting them in writing is going to just solidify that these are what we have committed to and plan to do for the rest of the 2021 school year. So with four minutes remaining, I know that there's a lot of questions still, like what would you like the community to know? You know, things like that, moving forward, what our timelines may be, how soon will we have a timeline? How soon will we have something to share with the community? You know, things like that are questions that are going through the heads of many out there, many teachers, many staff, many family members and we don't have the time today to do this or talk about it. But I do know that Ms. Uh, McDonald had talked about one of her thoughts <laughs> that she put out there was to have um, a way that we can communicate. You mentioned possibly weekly transparency meetings, and I'm not saying that that's what we're going to do. I'm just saying it was something that you had you know, touched on. And so, um, Ms. McDonald, is there something that you can share with the community? Because I'm sure they'd like to know, today was the third meeting, what should they expect next? And if you can share that, I'm going to turn the meeting back over to you um, with three minutes remaining so that you can respond to that and possibly close out the meeting. <laughs> Um, thank you, um, Ms. Cunningham, and, and, and thank you for your expert facilitation. Um, yet again, um, really, really deeply appreciative of your, your um, willingness to do that and help us out through this. this is, uh, it's been great. Um, I think, um, you know, in the interest of time, I might suggest, and, and the Regional School Committee can sort of address this in our, in our next regular meeting when we talk about future agenda um, um, planning, but I might suggest that um, I coordinate with, um, with the APEA Executive Board to sort of plan two things. Um, uh, a communication plan, sort of a, a joint communication. I think I, I, I'm sensing just from the, from the head nods going around that there's an interest in in planning a joint statement and communication to the community about the work that the collaborative work that's that's beginning on this voluntary return um, and then maybe um, get some ideas from from the exec board um, APA group on sort of future meetings um, like this or similar to this um, frequency and and sort of the, what our desire is there that then we can sort of take that back with the with the regional school committee just instead of talking about it right now are folks okay with that great 
Um, so uh, I will um, move to adjourn the regional school committee. Second. Moved by McDonald and seconded by Stancer, and it's a roll call vote. Mr. Demling? Demling, aye. Ms. Stancer? Stancer, aye. Ms. Spitzer? Ms. Spitzer, aye. Mr. Sullivan? Ms. Lord? Lord, aye. Mr. Harrington? Harrington, aye. Ms. Seeger? Seeger, aye. Um, Mr. Sullivan? Uh, McDonald, aye. Did I uh, did I get your vote, Mr. Demling? The region is adjourned.